Genesis 3.15 And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. By the end of this video, you're going to realize how Satan understood what this passage meant, which we believers know. It clearly prophesied that the Messiah was going to come. It prophesied that he would be born out of her seed with a virgin miraculous birth. And it meant a lot more. It meant that God essentially would be manifested in the flesh. Satan knew this. And he took this and he ran with it. Um, you see, Satan has tried to distort the meaning of the gospel, the meaning of the scriptures, uh, paganize a Christian system. He's tried it all. And unless you test the spirit, and unless you study the scriptures, and unless you seek him in spirit and in truth, you may fall for a deception. So, by the end of this video, we're going to realize that. But before we get to that point, I want you to please compare everything to scripture very important do not just take what anything that this crazy Puerto Rican is telling you over here on, on my side because I'm not perfect so study and compare and do your own research amen if you haven't seen part one the link is gonna be on the screen right now for you to click and view part one otherwise you will not understand part two and if you hear noise in the background understand that my daughter Natalie she's right behind me and um, Kids can make noise at times, so just want to make sure you understand that. Uh, now I'm going to read um, some notes that I have jotted down word for word, uh, so that that way I don't distort any of the message that um, the Lord has given me. Now, Satan has tried to do three things. One of the things is to trick uh, mankind into not believing the scriptures, into believing their own way. There's a false trinity in place. And Satan always twists the story. Now, in the first video, we talked about Osiris, and I mentioned um, uh, very shortly that I believe Nimrod is Osiris. And we're going to take a look at that in, in a moment. But let's look at other things that people know Nimrod as in secular history. Now, if you compare Nimrod, you can find very similar beings during those times that were taken out of who Nimrod was. Now, some believe that Nimrod was uh, a figure called Ninurta. Uh, Ninurta is first referred to in a Sumerian composition known as Lugali. Uh, in this poem, Ninurta is described as a king and a storm whose radiance is princely. He's also described as a hero striding fiercely into battle. In this and many other epic poems, Ninurta is seen slaying a variety of frightful creatures, including a giant eagle, a lion, a seven-headed serpent, and more. And if you look at scriptures, Genesis 10, uh, it describes Nimrod as a mighty hunter. Uh, Nimrod was a fierce and mighty hunter. A lot of people actually believe that Nimrod was actually also on a film. Another thing that's very interesting is that if you study the secular, it mentions that one of the reasons that Nimrod had um, such a power to defeat these wild fierce beasts is because he inherited um, through his father's side um, Cush who inherited it possibly from Ham and others um, these um, remember in Genesis 3 when um, Adam and Eve sinned that God made a special cloth for them a, a, a apron covering for them uh, it is believed that uh, Nimrod had a hold of these through his family's legacy and by using these coverings on him he was able to hunt and animals would just submit to him um, because when God sent Adam out of the garden he still had mercy and he knew Adam and Eve had to eat and with the coverings that God had made for them animals would submit to them so that they didn't have to go hunt so that's another secular thing that people believe and it's, it's pretty interesting I won't, I won't tell you no um, others believe that Nimrod was a Babylonian demigod so when when you look at, for example, uh, there's a story called Gilgamesh, the Epic of Gilgamesh. Uh, by far the best candidate is the ancient hero king Izdubar, more commonly known as Gilgamesh. Some of you have heard of this story called the Epic of Gilgamesh. Now, Gilgamesh was the king of Uruk, the biblical Erech, and was believed to have been given the secret knowledge of the world before the flood. Okay. Gilgamesh fits the descriptions of Nimrod 
both in name and in fame because it is believed that Gilgamesh did rule Uruk, one of the cities mentioned in the Bible as part of Nimrod's kingdom. So as you can see, there's plenty of evidence that the scriptures are the word of God because all you have to do is look around, even in secular evidence. That's why I don't understand evolutionists. There's so much evidence that points towards a global flood. There's so much evidence that points towards biblical characters like Nimrod. Others believe that Nimrod was Ninus, a Babylonian king. Uh, Ninus was also known as Shanzi Adad, the king of Isaria, who ruled around 800 BC. Uh, he was he was the founder of Nineveh, and as such, it's suggested by some that he represents essentially who Nimrod was. Ninus came on the world stage a little bit far too late in the game, according to some. And that's why not everybody believes that Ninus was uh, Nimrod. But nonetheless, some people do believe it, and that's good. So I'm discussing everything that a lot of people believe on it. Now, one of the ones that I believe is, and if you study this and you um, look at all of the scholars and you look at everything, you're going to notice that a lot of people, everybody, and just about everybody agrees that Osiris was Nimrod. Um, Osiris, just for those that don't know, uh, was the king of Egypt. He was a mighty man of old, a demigod, a giant, a king, a conqueror, a great civilization, and he built many cities. Furthermore, like Nimrod, Osiris, he greatly invested time in recovering information from the world before the flood. One of the main goals of Nimrod was to stage a rebellion. Um, as I told you before, um, in secular belief, he actually held cloths from Adam and Eve that he inherited to, the, to his father Cush and also from his father Ham, I believe, and, and so forth. He was very interested in building the same thing that was built before the flood. God had to intervene. And the only people that were found worthy at that time were Adam, uh, were Noah and his family because they genetically they were not polluted. You see, we had talked about Genesis 3.15, how God had warned him that out of her seed, out of her seed, that he would be destroyed. That warning that he gave him was essentially letting him know that a coming Messiah was coming and that that Messiah was God manifested in the flesh and he was going to come out of her seed. So what did Satan do? In the days of Noah, he came in, and when he came in as uh, with the fallen angels, Genesis 6, you see that they mated with women. How did they mate? I have no clue, but it happened. If you look at the word Bene Elohim, that's the word used, Bene Elohim, and it's every time it's used in the Old Testament, it's used referring to angelic beings. And when this happened, uh, he was doing it because he wanted to wipe out, wipe out every single being. Um, on the planet of the earth so that that way the promise of Genesis 3.15 wouldn't come to pass. But God intervened, sent Noah and his family, and look how many people there were in the world possibly, and only a few survived. You see? But God intervened, Satan lost again. Um, so Nimrod was doing the same thing. Nimrod was trying to build the same thing that they had before. It is believed that the pre -war, the pre-flood world was very sophisticated. Um, it is believed that they knew things uh, as far as technology that we even don't know today. Um, it is believed that they had capabilities that we don't know today. I mean, look at the pyramids. Look at how perfectly they're built. They're built in ways that even man today cannot build. Uh, very sophisticated world and Nimrod was trying to build the same exact things he was he was a conqueror he was traveling from city to city to gather as much information as he can to mount his rebellion against the Lord now in ancient times Osiris is very similar look at this just as Nimrod look in ancient times Osiris he traveled throughout the ancient world attempting to civilize mankind he also, because he traveled so much, he had left behind many mighty legends in the wake of his physical, intellectual, and spiritual giant of a man who had, in ancient times past, traveled to Mesopotamia and civilized the barbarians that had lived there. So when he left these places, they came up with different gods to substitute him. Some know Baal, for example. If you look at the Word of God, and uh, if you look at um, Elijah, he when he fought with the prophets of Baal. Who do you think Baal was? He was Nimrod. Osiris. 
Okay. Tamaz. The scriptures speak of Tamaz. Who do you think Tamaz was? <laughs> All right. This is this is this is powerful because a lot of people don't realize this. Now, their main goal was to civilize mankind, was to bring them back towards the rebellion, and to ensure that they didn't seek God. So, something crazy happened from that point forward, and that is that a false trinity arose. Okay, um, Osiris died. Okay, when Osiris died. Uh, it is believed that his body was cut up into 14 pieces okay uh, and if I'm wrong please correct me in the comment section and his um, wife um, Isis um, went looking for his body and she tried everything she could to look for his body the main goal of her looking for his body um, uh, was to basically try to resurrect him and she would build monuments every time she found one of his body pieces but you have to understand that Isis depended on Osiris because his fame gave her fame um, his godlike status gave her fame so what did she do she replicated Genesis 315 Isis you know what she did she um, faked the virgin birth she proclaimed that she came out of a vir you know that 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 Osiris uh, came to her and in, in a magical way which is actually the serpent that came to her um, uh, is believed and she came out with Horus and she said that Horus was the reincarnation of Osiris you know uh, the same exact thing uh, basically Osiris Yahweh look at that Isis the virgin birth Mary and Horus Jesus Christ you see how Satan works so this is a false trinity and Satan did this to try to fool people because he knew what was coming. If Satan didn't know what was coming, why did he try to manipulate the genetic beings on this world? Why did he come in Genesis 6 and, and try to destroy mankind and ensure that mankind was not following the ways of God? Uh, the only people that were found worthy at that point in time was Noah and his family genetically. Because he knew that the Messiah was coming. Why is it that after the flood, he still tried to do the same thing? Now he said, okay, there's no way I can physically stop the fact that uh, Christ is going to come. But I'm going to distort his message. I'm going to distort his message. And I'm going to say, I'm going to say that Isis was born of a virgin and that she fulfilled the Genesis 3.15 prophecy. Many people bought it into it. And because of that, it generated a flood of occult astrology mythology paganism when uh, Moses went up to the mount when he came down who did he find them worshiping a golden calf okay the calf is also a symbol that golden calf is also a symbol of Moloch which is essentially a symbol of Nimrod because Nimrod is known as Osiris Moloch um, Tammuz Baal it's the same 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 spirit in different packages um, let me give you even a, a more secular example have you heard of Cupid Valentine's Day in Valentine's Day you have the story of Cupid and what does Cupid have he has a bow and arrow right that bow and arrow he has that because that's representing the mighty hunter Nimrod you see that which is Osiris and um, according to the story uh, you know Venus and Cupid and all of that stuff but if you really start thinking about it and you really start researching you're gonna find out that in Babylon they were known as Semiramis and Tammuz in Egypt they were known as Isis and Osiris in Phoenicia they were known as Ashtaroth and Baal so you see Tammuz is essentially Osiris Horus which is Nim uh, which is Nimrod uh, the bow equaled that he was a mighty hunter this is just amazing to me if you open your eyes you're gonna see this pagan worship all around us but nobody's doing anything about it and why isn't anybody doing anything about it that's because a lot of the leaders that are in the church are part of this very system and we'll talk about that in the next video so as you can see Nimrod has done a lot of damage not only did he try to establish a rebellion against God in the last video we saw and God defeated him not only did that 
Um, does that show you that the same thing is going to happen now? That nothing new is under the sun? He's going to try to establish a rebellion against God and he's going to lose again. But look at how he tainted Genesis 3.15. Because a lot of people right now that are watching this video even rejected Jesus Christ as God manifested in the flesh. They say, oh, that's just a story, Tally. That's part of the mystery religion. Don't you get it, Tally? Horus is Jesus. Isis is Mary. And Osiris is Yahweh. Don't you understand that it's all fake? Um, and with all due respect, I tell you, don't you understand that we not only have the scriptures, but we've actually encountered the presence of God? You see, if you even told me today the scriptures are all a lie, which they're not, you know what I have? I have the power of God that I've experienced every single day in my life. And on top of that, we do have the scriptures which have been 100% accurate. Um, but there's no comparison. No comparison between the false trinity and the true God of the Bible. Because if you look at the false trinity, you have Isis who taught occult symbolism who taught astrology who wanted to be worshipped Mary didn't want to be worshipped Mary always pointed to God Mary didn't remain an eternal virgin like the Catholic Church te teaches you Mary had other kids Mary was not perfect as Isis proclaims herself Mary needed a savior in Jesus Christ let's take a look at Osiris okay he was trying to he was trying to take Yahweh's role uh, Yahweh is the creator. Yahweh created man out of the dust of the world and he breathed life into, into man. Uh, he, Satan is not that way. Satan is not original. Don't you get it? All Osiris could do, Nimrod, was try to build a tower. My goodness, that's all he could do? And try to establish a rebellion, that's all he could really do? There's no comparison between Osiris and Yahweh. There's no comparison between Isis and Mary. To completely different. And Osiris, Jesus, really? I mean, I mean, Horus, Jesus. Are you kidding me? If you look at at at, at Horus and Jesus Christ, there's no comparison. Horus wanted to be treated as royalty. He wanted to proclaim himself as king. He ordered people to do everything they did. He he probably didn't have to work a day in his life. Jesus, God manifested in the flesh. Not only was he born of a virgin, but he came down, made himself poor, lowly, living a life as a humble high priest for us, for our salvation. There's no comparison. You can't compare the two. Yet people throw the whole, uh, the whole gospel away because they say, Oh, Tally, I understand that the scriptures say in Revelation 22.13, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. The first and the last. 22.16 I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify to you these things in the churches. I know that Revelation 22.13 and 22.16 Jesus is calling himself Alpha and Omega beginning and the end. And I know that's their tally, but I still can't accept it because of Isis and Horus and Osiris. And my question to you is this. Are you going to allow... Are you going to interpret the world with the scriptures? Or are you, or are you going to interpret the scriptures with the world? Or you have Revelations 1.8 where Jesus says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. And somebody might say, Tally, I know that says it there, but because um, Horus was Osiris reborn, I can't accept that, Tally. So, you have the scriptures which have been accurate. And they've predicted what's happening now. Famine, earthquakes, a new world order, a one global currency. And you have the scriptures which have been accurate telling you clearly in 1 Timothy 3.16 that God was manifested in the flesh. John 1.1 1, 1, I believe says that the word was with God and the word was God. And then 1 John 1.14 and if I'm wrong on these verses I'll put them on the screen. I'm doing it on top of my head. There it clearly says that the word which we know was God dwelt among us. So if the word was God, right? And it dwelt among us. What does that mean? That God dwelt among us. Yeshua was God manifested in the flesh. 1 Timothy 3.16 and Revelation 1.8. I am the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end. Jesus Christ saying that. So don't throw this away because of Nimrod. Because if not, you're allowing Nimrod to win. 
I know that I've, you know, talked a lot in this video, but my hope today is that you understand that not only has Nimrod influenced uh, a new world order, not only are they rebuilding the tower, not only has Nimrod, Osiris, has uh, proclaimed uh, occult science, voodoo science, uh, the Hermetica, research the Hermetica, uh, not only has he influenced astrology, pagan worship, not only has he been worshipped as Baal, and, and you saw Elijah defeated him there again. My goodness, how many times does, uh, does Nimrod have to be defeated so that people can understand? His track record isn't good, you know? His track record isn't good. And he knows he's not ready for the fight that's coming. So all he can do is try to lie and, and uh, cheat and steal to try to take away your salvation. Uh, but don't allow the lies of satan to distort the meaning of the gospel has the catholic church christianized the system yes is there a pagan system of christianity in place yes but that pagan system of christianity does do the same thing that horus and isis did because they say that mary was the eternal virgin they do the same exact thing they do the same thing that Baal worshippers did with um, little prayer um, beads and everything like that but true believers, the disciples in the word, never did that. So don't let, don't let Nimrod take away your salvation. Okay? So uh, we're done with this video. I know that I've been very lengthy. And um, in the next video, we're going to be talking about why pastors are not speaking on this. Why pastors are being quiet. Uh, if I know this information, you best be sure that pastors know this information. And the reason they don't say anything about it, it's because of Hiram Abif. You're probably saying to yourself, Tally, you learned a new language? What the heck? No. You'll, you'll find out soon who Hiram Abif is. And a lot of pastors are going to get upset with me when I preach on this because they know that they are in the occult. And they know that they are involved in sun worship as well. So, may God bless you and the family. Hope every one of you is awesome. And um, God bless. Thank you for sticking through this boring video. <laughs> but I'm glad you enjoyed it. God bless.